Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope you're doing well. We are continuing our reading of dun da 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 Samadis for you. Volume 1, Chapters of Salah. Let's begin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yes. Chapter 139, what has been related about what is between the east and the west is a Qibla. Abu Huraira narrated that Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, What is between the east and the west is Qibla, Sahih. In another chain with a similar Sahih narration, Abu Isa said, The Hadith of Abu Huraira has been narrated from him by other routes. Some of the people of knowledge have criticized Abu Mashar due to his memory. His name is Naji and he is a freed slave of Banu Hashim. Muhammad said, I do not report anything from him, although the people have reported from him. And Muhammad said, The Hadith of Abdullah bin Jafar al Makrami from Uthman bin Muhammad al Aksnasi, from Said al Makburi, from Abu Huraira, is stronger and more correct than the hadith of Abu Mashar. Another chain narrating that Abu Huraira narrated that Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, What is between the east and the west is Qibla, Sahih. And they only call him Abdullah bin Jafar al Makrami because he is a descendant of al Miswar bin Makrama. Abu Isa said, This hadith is Hassan Sahih. What is between the east and the west is Qibla. What has been reported for more than one of the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, among them are Umar bin al Katab, Ali bin Abi Talib, and Ibn Abbas. Ibn Umar said, When the west is to your right and the east is to your left, then what is between them is Qibla, when you are facing the Qibla. Ibn al-Mubarak said, What is between the east and the west is Qibla. This is for people of the east. And Abdullah bin al-Mubarak preferred that the people of Mar Mur face toward the left. Okay, so... Hmm. Abdullah bin Jafar. Comments. In this hadith, the direction of the Qibla of the people of Al Madina and that of the outskirts of Al Madina is mentioned. Scholars quoted that while offering prayer, if a person stands at 45 degree angle to the right side or to the left facing the direction of the Qibla, the prayer is valid. And according to some even up to 30, 2 degrees is acceptable. Marifa Sunan 3, 377. Chapter 140. What has been related about a man who prays facing a direction other than the Qibla when it is cloudy? Abdullah bin Amr bin Rabia narrated from his father who said, We were with the Prophet, peace be upon him, on a journey on a very dark night and we did not know the direction of the Qibla so each man among us prayed in his own direction in the morning when we mentioned that to the Prophet peace be upon him then the following was revealed so wherever you turn there is a face of Allah Daif Abu Isa said there is a problem with the chain of this hadith we do not know of it except as a narration of Ash'ath as Saman and Ashrath bin Sayyid, Abu Rabia As Saman is weak in a hadith. Most of the people of knowledge held views in accordance with this, that they said if, that if a, one performs salah when it is cloudy, toward a direction other than the Qibla, then it becomes clear to him after having prayed that he prayed in a direction other than the Qibla, then his salah is acceptable. This is the view of Sufyan al-Thawri ibn al-Mubarak, Ahmad and Ishaq. 
sometimes it's like difficult you know if you didn't have the app on your phone you wouldn't really know what way to face I feel and sometimes you're on a plane and you can't really turn or you're on a bus seems kind of difficult sometimes comments if a person does not know the direction of the cable he should ask someone and if there is none to guide then he should determine the direction of the cable by himself and he should perform prayer facing the direction which he most likely thinks would be the Qibla. However, if the right direction of the Qibla is known after performing the prayer, it is not necessary to repeat the prayer. And this is according to the majority of the scholars. Okay, so that's a good thing right here. So you, if you learn it later, you don't have to repeat it. Not necessary to repeat. Now, how do you find this out? Sorry, I held in a sneeze. How do you find this out? How should you determine it? Traveling all throughout the earth. How do you go about doing that? It seems kind of difficult. Chapter 141. What has been related about what is disliked to face while performing Salah or to perform Salah in? Ibn Umar narrated. The Prophet, peace be upon him, prohibited Salah from being performed in seven places. The dung heap, the slaughtering area, the graveyard, the commonly used road, the wash area in the area that the camels rest at, and above the house of Allah, the Kaaba. Okay, so, we're, oh, we're right here, look. The commonly used road. Okay, I'm going to put a star by that. Because we do see videos on Twitter slash X of Muslims blocking traffic and praying. I've seen it multiple times now. Others have reported on it. People got pissed off at me for mentioning it, but I think it's important. You know, I'm going to put a little bookmark there because it's bad manners and it's really an inconvenience. So here, the commonly used road, you ain't, you don't need to be praying over there. So maybe I'll later take a picture of it as well, save it in my phone. So when I come across a post where it's talking about Muslims blocking traffic and, you know, doing these sort of demonstrations where they just have a mass prayer in the middle of the road and people are honking, it's really inconvenient, I can put this hadith that, there and then maybe people can learn like, oh, that's not proper manners, okay? The commonly used road and then the wash area sounds like the laundry area. And then, like, where the camels rest. The dung heap. That's important because you don't want to get all that all over your rug. And you're supposed to be in a place of cleanliness. Comments. Public garbage and slaughterhouses are places of unpleasant smells and dirt. And also has the definite possibility of impurity. No person of good nature would like to perform an act of worship at such a place. Offering prayer in a graveyard resembles the polytheists and grave worshippers. Doing so in the middle of the path is troublesome and causes difficulty in the people. See the road thing here? That's why it's so important to study our faith. Because the path will be closed and the person himself will not be at rest. Praying on the roof of the house of Allah is disrespectful, and the direction of the person will not be towards the house of Allah. Oh, that's a good point. So, I don't think, I've, I've never, I've see, only seen the leader of Saudi Arabia walk on top of the Kaaba to inspect it. But I saw some people got mad. That was quite some time ago. Another chain with similar narrations, Hassan, he said... There are narrations on this topic from Abu Marthad, Jabir, and Anas. Abu Marthad's name is Kanaz bin Hussein. Abu Isa said, The chain for the hadith of Ibn Umar is not strong. Zaid bin Jabura, one of the narrators, in both narrations has been criticized due to his memory. One second, I'm going to itch my nose. Got a tissue here. Abu Isa said, Zaid bin Jubair al Kufi is more confirmed than this one, 
and lived earlier, and he heard from Ibn Umar. Al-Layth bin Sa'd narrated this hadith from Abdullah bin Umar al-Umari, from Nafi, from Umar, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, and it is similar to number 346. The hadith of Dawood from Nafi, from Ibn Umar, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, is more appropriate and more correct than the hadith of Al-Layth bin Sa'd. Abdullah bin Umar al-Umari was considered weak by some of the people of Hadith due to his memory. One of these scholars was Yahya bin Sa'id al Qatar. Chapter 142 What has been related about Salah in sheep pens and the resting area of camels? Abu Huraira narrated that Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, Perform Salah in sheep pens, but do not perform Salah in the camel's resting area. Hassan. Another chain from Abu Huraira from the Prophet, peace be upon him, and it is the same or similar. Hassan. He said, There are narrations on this topic from Jabr bin Samura, al Bara, Sabra bin Mabad, al Juhani, Abdullah bin Mugafal, Ibn Umar, and Anas. Abu Isa said, The hadith of Abu Huraira is a Hassan Sahih hadith. This is acted upon according to our companions, and it is the saying of Ahmad and Ishaq. The hadith of Abu Hassin, a narrator in this chain of hadith, from Abu Saleh, from Abu Huraira, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, is a Garib hadith. Israel reported it from Abu Hassan, from Abu Saleh, from Abu Huraira, which is Mawkuf. He did narrate it in Maruf form. Sorry, in Marfu form. Abu Hassan's name is Uthman bin Asim al Asadi. Anas bin Malik narrated The Prophet, peace be upon him, would perform salah in sheep pens. I think that's helpful for people who, today even, but especially back then, time for prayer comes and you're with your flock. And you gotta pray right there, keep an eye on them, in order to prevent predators. And maybe it's just a pasturing time, and you don't have like how are you gonna get your sheepdog that fast to bring them all back in, so you can pray safely. Or maybe where you're grazing them is is a bit far, so you can just pray right there. I wonder. Abu Isa said. This hadith is a Hassan Sahih hadith. Abu Attaya Adubay's one of the narrator's name is Yazid bin Humaid. Chapter 143 What has been related about Salah on a beast whichever direction it is facing? Jabir narrated, The Prophet peace be upon him dispatched me for something he needed came to him while he was performing Salah on his mount. Heading east, he made the prostrations lower than the bowing. Sahih. He said, There are narrations on this topic from Anas, Ibn Umar, Abu Sa'id, and Amr bin Rabia. Abu Isa said, The Hadith of Jabr is a Hassan Sahih Hadith. It is this Hadith has been related from other routes to Jabr. This is acted upon according to the people of knowledge. In general, we do not know of any differences among them about it. They do not see any harm in a man performing voluntary Salah on his mount, facing whichever direction it is headed, toward the Qibla or not. Perfect! Look at that! So you're out there having a horseback ride and then time for prayer comes and you are on the animal you don't know well be at ease and if you think about how people were doing caravan traveling back then like you're, you're, you're transporting goods through camel caravans 
and you got to keep them going in the sun it's like let's say you're heading out before the sun is going to be roasting and time is of the essence and so the animals are in a steady pace everything's calm no one's coming across and making them scatter and then you can like pray and the animals just keep on going you know in their steady pace especially a camel you know Chapter 144, one has been related about Salah toward one's mount. Ibn Umar narrated, The Prophet, peace be upon him, performed Salah towards his she-camel, or his mount, and he would perform Salah while on his mount, whichever direction it was facing. Sahih. Abu Isa said, This hadith is a Hasan Sahih hadith. It is the view of some of the people of knowledge they do not see any harm in Salah toward a she-camel that one uses as a sutra. So, she-camel used as a sutra. Alright, comments. It is proven from this hadith that taking an animal as a sutra is allowed so long as the risk of it running and moving away is not involved, which will cause extra disruption and worry in the prayer. Okay, so, animal sutra. Chapter 145 What has been related about when supper is present and the ikama is called for salah, then begin with supper. Anas conveyed that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, When supper is present and the ikama for salah has been called, then begin with supper. Sahih. Abu Isa said, there are narrations on this topic from Aisha ibn Umar, Salama ben al Aqwa, and Om Salama. Abu Isa said, The hadith of Anas is a Hasan Sahih hadith. This is acted upon according to some of the people of knowledge, among the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, among there are Abu Bakr, Umar, and ibn Umar. It is the view of Ahmad and Ishaq, they said, that one is to begin with supper even if one misses Salah in the congregation. Okay, so, okay, so we have Ahmad and Ishaq, that one is to begin with supper. Abu Isa said, I heard al Jarud saying, I heard Waqi saying the following about this hadith. Begin with supper when the food is such that one fears it's spoiling. But the view of some of the people of knowledge among the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and others is more worthy of being followed. They not only wanted that a man not stand in Salah while his heart is distracted by something else. I was just thinking of that because when, when you know the food is there, and you, like I say, you've been fasting or something, and now it's time for you to eat, that's going to be real difficult for you. It has been related that Ibn Abbas said, we do not stand in Salah. While there is something distracting us in our souls. Would you look at that? Ibn Abbas. Ibn Umar narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, When the supper is present and the ikama is called for salah, then begin with the supper, sahih. He said, Ibn Umar would eat supper while he was hearing the Aima recitation. He said, this was narrated to us by Hanad, who said, Abda narrated it to us from Ubaidullah, from Nafi, from Ibn Umar. Chapter 146 What has been related about Salah when sleepy? Aisha narrated that Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, said, When one of you is sleepy, and he is performing Salah, then let him lie down until the sleep is gone from him. For when one of you performs Salah while he is sleepy, perhaps he wants to seek forgiveness, but he curses himself. Sahih. He said, There are narrations on this topic from Anas and Abu Huraira. Abu Isa said, The hadith of Aisha is a Hassan Sahih hadith. This one is really important because I remember when I was pregnant, and it's like, 
when it's fudger and you've been going to the bathroom a lot and you're it's just so difficult to sleep sometimes or you're nauseated and this and you didn't you know slumber overcomes you or it's like the night prayer and you're just like the weight the extreme weight sleep deprived moms really do struggle and so I see this as a mercy towards mothers I really do because like if you don't have anybody to help you to, like to because you got to do your chores you got to do things and it's not always possible to get enough sleep and then you know night feeds and whatnot and then not every child sleeps perfectly through the night and so as the days stretch on and that sleep deprivation compounds itself there's these moments where you're like oh like you just oh, you're just so tired and I think this is a good example of mercy towards mothers or if you've been like you're, you just got home like I get nauseated and, I, and, and car sick when we drive far and if you're in San Francisco and you're in traffic it's like stop go stop go stop go and you just by the time you finally get home and you're like oh I just I gotta I gotta just uh. it's intense right like if you just had like a power nap for 20 minutes you can shake off that nausea and shake off that slumber because and and feel and feel real re, like leveled again, restabilized. Because sometimes, man, it's just intense. And there's been times where I remember I was so drowsy, I ended up forgetting what I was saying. Because I was like, I'm doing it, and I'm like, did I already say this? Or I was repeating myself, you know. And then I was like, oh man, I gotta just let me just. It was it's intense. May Allah protect us. Chapter 147. What has been related about whoever visits a people, he does not lead them in Salah. Abu Atiya narrated that the man among them said, Malik bin al Huraith came to us in our Musalla to narrate. One day when it was time for Salah, we told him to go ahead to lead the prayer. He said, let one of you go forward until I narrate to you why I would not go forward to lead the prayer. I heard Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, saying, whoever visits the people, then he does not lead them, but a man among them leads them. Hassan. Well, it was just amazing. This hadith is a Hassan Sahih hadith. This is acted upon according to most of the people of knowledge among the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him and others. They say that the owner of the house has more right to being the Imam than the visitor. Okay. It's fantastic. You just never know what you're going to come across. That's what I really enjoy about Hadith. Some of the people of knowledge said, that when the visitor is given permission, then there is no harm if he leads them in Salah. So given permission. Ishaq commented on the hadith of Malik bin al huraith He was very strict on the view that no one should lead the owner of the house in Salah, even if he is given the permission to do so. Hmm. The same thing applies in the case of the masjid. He does not lead them in the Salah and the Masjid when he visits them. Rather, a man from among them should lead them in Salah. I wonder if it's like he can cause people to feel some type of way, but that's... I can see it from both angles. We want to honor them and be like, no, this is your home. You take the lead. Other times people are like, no, we're good. It's that's, you know, something different. We want to honor you and let you lead us. So you can see how it can go both ways. Comments. The owner of the house has the right to lead the prayer, but if he allows someone more knowledgeable and virtuous than himself because of his respect and nobility, most of the people of knowledge regard the authenticity of a prayer led by a visitor 
yet leading prayer without the permission of the owner of the house or the imam is not right. Okay. So, you, they can be honored by it, but you can't just be like, um, excuse me, um, I'm just going to go ahead and do it and pray now. Slow your roll. Chapter 148. What has been related about it being disliked for the imam to specify himself with supplications? Thauban narrated that the prophet, peace be upon him, said, It is not allowed for a man to look into the interior of a man's house until he has been given permission. For if he looks, then he has entered, and one who leads people in Salah should not supplicate for himself alone with the exclusion of his congregation. Okay, so notice this. Yet do Imams can't just be like, oh, please me, 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 but to think of everyone too. If he does, then he has betrayed them. And one is not to stand for Salah while he has to urinate. Hassan. Oh, that's, oh my goodness, it's interesting that they mentioned that. Because when you're pregnant, your ability to hold your urine is not easy. Because the baby's head rests like right on top of your bladder, you know, and you got to stay hydrated because you got to keep that amniotic fluid up, and you don't want to be dehydrated, not healthy, you know. Your body's working overtime, and there's been times where I'm like, oh, you, you, like you did your would do from Maghreb, and you want to keep your would do till Isha, but then all of a sudden, you're like, oh boy. I gotta go to the bathroom. Oh, maybe I can hold it. I have that problem. I mean, I think it's important to go to the bathroom and then you do your wudu, right? Always empty your bladder before you go to pray. Because it's not cool when it's distracting you. But I do understand when people try to hold it because they don't want to have to do it, do it again. But you don't get a bladder infection keep messing around. He said, there are narrations on this topic from Abu Huraira and Abu Umama. Abu Isa said, the hadith of Thauban is a Hassan hadith. This hadith was reported from Muawiyah bin Saleh, from As-Safr bin Nusayr, from Yazid bin Shure, from Abu Umama, from the Prophet, peace be upon him. And this hadith was reported from Yazid bin Shura, from Abu Huraira, from the Prophet, peace be upon him. It is as if the narration of Yazid bin Shura from Abu Hay al Muarihin from Thauban, a narrator in the chain of this hadith, is the best and most popular chain for this. Let's read the commentary so we can get some better context. This hadith instructs that to peep into someone's house without permission is unlawful. Perfect. I like that privacy angle because people can be quite nosy, but it would also say stop leaving your doors open. I know some neighbors, they always leave their doors open. And you're walking, da 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 da, da and it's like, I don't know what it is. But you want to look. It's like, huh? What's going on over there? But I don't think people should do that. The purpose of seeking permission is not to look at the household suddenly. If one has already taken a peep, then what is needed of seeking permission? As if he entered without the permission, which is unlawful. Should not supplicate for himself alone. So two, should not supplicate for himself alone. Might also mean that if he is requested to make a supplication, he should do so for all, not only for himself. For the supplication reported from the Prophet, peace be upon him, will be read as reported, and no change will be made in these supplications by anyone. Chapter 149 What has been related about whoever leads the people in Salah while they dislike him? Anas bin Malik narrated, Allah's Messenger, Peace be upon him, curse three people. A man who leads people in Salah while they dislike him, 
a woman who spends a night while her husband is angry with her, and a man who hears Haya Ala come to success, then does not respond. Daif. This is weak, but the one who spends a night while her husband is angry with her, I think that's talking about when she's refused intimacy and her husband goes to bed uh, angry because he's like super horny. Right, because when you, when you want intimacy and you don't get it, you can be very upset. And the angels are literally cursing her, you know. So you gotta be smart and think about that. And someone who hears the prayer call and is like, "No, nah, I'm not going." But it'd be awkward, but for, for to like lead a prayer and you know those people don't like you and. You can't enjoy the prayer behind someone who you don't really like because you're just sitting there thinking about how much you hate them. You know? So, this then implies the Imam should make sure that he isn't hated by his congregation. And this also would make it clear that you should go where you are welcome. Right? You shouldn't be intrusive. Read the room, as they say. Abu Isa said, The hadith of Anas is not correct because it has been reported from Al Hasan from the Prophet, peace be upon him, which is Marsal. <laughs> she says my name sometimes when she sees a baby on the screen. Or there's like a. anything like a baby animal, baby cat, baby human, she will call me. Her and her sister. So whether they're coloring or watching our planet, something like that, she always says it. Abu Isa said, Muhammad bin Al Qasim, one of the narrators, has been criticized by Ahmad bin Hanbal, and he graded him weak. He is not a Hafiz, meaning that Muhammad bin Al Qasim is not known to be a proficient memorizer and narrator of hadith. There are those among the people of knowledge who dislike for a man to lead a people in salah while they dislike him. If the imam is not an oppressor, then the sin is only on those who dislike him. Oh, would you look at that? Ahmad and Ishaq said about this, There is no harm if anyone, two or three people, dislike him. Not until most of the people dislike him. Oh, okay. So it's not that you're trying to we have a popularity contest, but it's just, I don't know, you can't make everyone like you. It's just not possible. But if most of the people don't like you, well, then you can see there might be a justification for that and you need to check it out. Okay, comments. One, if a husband is angry because of his wife being ill-mannered, disrespectful, and disobedient, she deserves the curse. Two, a person lagging behind the congregational prayer after having heard the adhan is subject to curse too. Okay, so a wife being ill-mannered, disrespectful, and disobedient. This would then imply that a wife is to be respectful. Because what are the antonyms, right? Well-mannered. And obedient. Feminists are raging. Amr bin al Harith al Mustalik said, It used to be said that the people with the worst punishment on the day of judgment are two a woman who disobeyed her husband and a people's imam who they dislike. Sahih. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, a woman who disobeyed her husband. They're gonna get so mad. Okay. I'm gonna put another one. By this. Put a little piece of paper there. Because later I'll put a one of those, uh, you know, highlighter, like pink, orange, yellow stickers that you fold onto a book to leave a permanent sticker annotation book tab. I'll put that there. Hanad said, Jarir said, 
So we asked about the case of the Imam. We were told that this only refers to the oppressive Imam. As for the Imam who establishes the Sunnah, then the sin is only on whoever dislikes him. Mashallah, mashallah. Alright, we'll pause here. And, uh, oh wait, let's do this one because actually it'll go on to chapter 150, so let's finish chapter 140. Abu Umama narrated that Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, There are three whose salah would not rise up beyond their ears. The runaway slave until he returns, a woman who spends a night while her husband is angry with her, and a people's imam who they dislike, Hassan. Abu Isa said, This hadith is Hassan Garib from this route. One of the narrators, Abu Ghalib's name is Hazawar. So here we have another example. Of you don't want your husband to go to bed angry with you. Okay, so peaceful sleep, harmony, lack of agitation. So, what is a wife supposed to do if you guys have had an argument? Try to smooth things over. It can be hard, but it's not cool to go to bed angry. I wish I would have learned that before. Because with my very ever first relationship, I would leave to work sometimes angry. And that was not a healthy thing to do because now I'm at work and I'm pissed off. And I think before I got out of the car to go to work, as he was dropping me off, I, I should have found a way to make it up, to, to end on a high note. But I was only 16, you know, 16, 17. And I think it's important uh, for people to recognize how you don't want your significant other to constantly be pissed at you. And so when you strive to do good with each other, that's a healthy thing. May Allah guide us and protect us and allow us to be the great spouses that we are called to be. If you'd like to support my work and see more of the refutations and other things I write about, you can go to www.subscribestar.com slash Hope to see you there.